Ooh, what's going on, guys? Glowing Your Studios coming at you with a brand new sculpt. And let me tell you, this one's going to be a doozy. So you guys need to strap yourselves in for quite the intense sculpt. We are going to be doing Dragonite, Dragonair, and Dratini all in the same model. How exciting. Come on, come on, come on. It's going to look really good. I promise. Now, let's get down to basics. We love Pokemon, and I'm going to explain later in the video that Pokemon is a great way to start learning how to sculpt or even draw. We got a lot of basic shapes here, people. So we got, ready, sphere for the head, or skull, base of the skull, I suppose, and a sphere for the snout, right? So it's just two spheres that are combined, cone for the little horn, tube for the little antenna. Then all this, this big region right here, that's just the two people, right? All diminishing radius right here going down at the end and then a little bit skinnier up the top for the neck Obviously, he's got a big belly over here, but that's just a tube Unsurprisingly the arms are tubes also so we just got to draw a tube out The wings are gonna be another tube, right? It's gonna be a tube that's bent right in the middle So it's gonna be shaped like that and then we're gonna be using a square you know, to serve as a plane for the membrane and we're just gonna use a trim tool to cut a little M shape and then for the legs right here, we're going to be doing a sphere, another sphere, and then another sphere right there. Claws or cones, and that is pretty much it. That's a uh, that's a Dragonite for you. Dragonair and Dratini are both the same, right? So put it, here's a visual, right? Imagine both of them. Sphere, tube, boom. That's a Dragonair, that's a Dratini. You're like, what? It's a lot more than that. No, I promise you it's not, and you're going to see how just how simple it is so without further ado let's go uh let's go sculpt these bad boys shall we come on all right let's put this plan into action shall we so what do we say we're going to start with two spheres right one for the head and one for the or skull and then one for the snout i guess actually both be part of the skull but it doesn't really matter anyway i digress so you get the idea a little cone for the horn then we're going to do a tube for his torso much very very simple shapes that just need to be positioned in a way that look believable right so since his arms are a bit more linear i decided to go with the tubes for there um you know they're really just cylinders so you know you could angle slightly at an elbow uh did multiple spheres for his big chunky legs and then we are going to do a tube with a diminishing radius for the wings now you see that i fluff out the arms a little bit uh, kind of arbitrarily add some cones for the claws right here i am putting in a placeholder for the wing membrane and i'm using the trim tool to cut out the shape to make it look a little bit more fine a little bit more distinct and then here we're going to add some uh, claws for the feet and at this point we're going to smooth out a couple of items here out of course those signature antennae that's a plural of antennas people it is antennae all right don't let anyone ever tell you different Adjusting the symmetry for the body, and here is a little turntable for the base mesh for Dragonite. You can see that we got all the basic proportions down. This isn't too hard, people. Come on, we could do this. This is one of the most fun things about Pokemon, is that the shapes that they use are so simple, and uh, but, but they manage to make it so distinct. I don't know, it really is a magic. They have perfected this formula. So, I did two spheres for the eyes, and here I am using an additional set of spheres that I'm elongating to like a more oval shape and ovular, ovoid shape, so that I can kind of uh, facilitate a look of eyebrows. So, that's it. This is, you're gonna see that this is gonna develop a lot more down the line, but you know that's the that's the basic idea. But anyway, yeah, Pokemon shapes are so fun i think that uh, i remember when i first got into sculpting somebody had said that there was a guy i was watching who was i think it was using clay he was using clay this guy and he was sculpting a bulbasaur and he says that the way that he got into sculpting and a way that he recommends how people to begin sculpting is through pokemon because they all use such simple but effective shapes you know, the, like, let's say, like, really, look, take a look at this Dragonite, right? Let's say if we look at Ken Sugimori's art, right? That's, like, the kind of default standard look of Dragonite. We really are dealing with very simple shapes. Very round, chunky shapes, you know, lots of spheres. 
kind of just stretched and you know played around with and you know once you put it all together and in that specific composition now you're met with a whole character and you know you really take this and you could compare this to a whole bunch of like look at i mean charizard and dragon are obviously very similar uh in that respect but you know you look at even you know this style of pokemon it's like you know the super strong ones right not even pseudo legendaries but you know you have like the big chunky bodies with the huge legs the thinner arms they stand more or less upright um like who's an example um rhyperior tyranitar uh agron um you know there's like th that general style of pokemon that kind of you know very i would say primitive look uh kind of cartoon dinosaur but that whole you know that whole style of pokemon and yet still they look distinct obviously a lot of that is through the colors but you know the various crests they have the shapes of the limbs the way that the claws are used all the the texture on their skin that's used it really you know it, it really is a fantastic formula i recommend that to absolutely anybody but enough about me gushing about pokemon still though for real guys definitely go give it a look but here we have uh now we're, i'm touching up the wings a little bit doing a little remeshing giving it a little bit more shape you could see that you know now the character is really beginning to come to life now another thing too that i will say to any new sculptors um, I do, from the bottom of my heart, recommend that before you pose, uh, you sculpt the character in a neutral pose to make sure that you got the proportions right, and then you articulate it afterwards. So, one of the things that I have to tell myself almost every time that I sculpt is like, you know, damn, like when I'm doing, the, even when that Dragonite was just standing in, in position, I was like, okay, you know, like we got something, but it's very dissatisfying because it is not set in that dynamic pose. And you're used to seeing all these creatures. I mean, listen, maybe not with X and Y and, you know, Sun and Moon and Sword and Shield's model work, because those things, Jesus, they do not have the kind of spark that the older generations have. But you're used to seeing these creatures in, um, and this goes for all sculpts, you know, in a much more dynamic, interesting pose. So don't doubt yourself look at what you have so far and then you're gonna see that you know even let's say you know with this dragonite here it is by no means um you know at, at this point by its at its finished stage or even close to it but just adjusting the uh the limbs the positioning of the torso the head and giving it like again it just breathes so much life by setting it into that uh, articulated positions like oh damn like now my model is doing something so always you know see your project through the end you're, you're gonna experience a lot of doubt when it comes to you know making your work and especially for complicated and ambitious projects you will look at the work that's right in front of you and you'll start to think to yourself wow should i even continue should i bother with this it's not even like you hate it you just you know you're you're you think, why am I, am I going to continue this? Why not do something different? Do something easier. I promise you, keep going. That's what's going on right here, right? So here, you know, I use the mask tool to make Dragonite's underbelly and the striations that go, that run along his entire, his entire body. And then this, you're like, oh, this guy's doing a, dr a Dragonair right now. No, I was doing this, this, I had this, this, this image of a gigantic energy wave that's going to come up and swirl behind him as he's using dragon claw but this is what this is what, i mean this is not coming to life i had my doubts before especially before i uh remeshed all the pieces and now at this point I'm like yeah we are we are absolutely cooking like something is in the oven right now and this is you know stage two i guess uh where we have we have the dragonite all remeshed the pose is more or less solidified and now it's time to sculpt dragoner so i was like okay one of the things that I'm going to be doing for my Pokemon sculpts is I think that there's so, in any sculpt really, there's so much more character when there's more than one being on the stage. So I was like, okay, what's perfect for this? All right, so if we're going to do Pokemon, we got to do an evolutionary line. You know, I've seen this a lot in other uh, one-off companies and they do an incredible job integrating the evolutionary line into their finished project so it's like okay this how are we gonna do this so drag you saw that that card art the things like dragonite gx was clearly the inspiration for the for the pose of my model 
It's like, this looks fire. It's like, you all the time we see Dragonite using Hyper Beam, Dragonite's using Dragon Tail, you know, where he's kind of like showing his belly and like the tail is, you could, you could envision it, right? Where it's a crescent shape. His head is facing forward, and imagine, you know, he's showing his belly and the tail is kind of curving up and forward underneath. We're, we're not we're not doing that. Let's do something a little bit more interesting. So he's using Dragon Claw here, and then how I wanted to make, because since Dragonair is enormous, I think Dragonair is like 22 feet, canonically, quote-unquote, even though, like, those freaking measurements are just the most whack thing imaginable. I want you guys to... Do you guys remember that Charizard is only 4'11"? Are you kidding me? You, you have to... So... When I was in freaking what, like eighth, nah, before that, I don't know, like maybe like sixth grade, that's the height of Charizard, get out of here, no way. Now, anywho, um, I wanted to have Dragoner swirling around Dragonite and it was kind of like coating him, right, and kind of rearing up behind him, like it's just a majestic beast, you know, flowing through the environment. Now, here we're doing Dratini, because of course, you know, we got to have the little guy, you know, in there as well. I will say that I wasn't very sure where to put him. It is a... Like, I knew that I wanted to have Dragonair flowing behind the uh, the Dragon Knight. But the Jatini, I was like, mm, I don't know how to really throw it in. I had a couple ideas, you know, where I wanted it swirling up and kind of countering the Dragonair. I was like, you know what? This doesn't... It looks too out of place. I feel like it takes a bit of the focus and the composition away from the Dragon Knight. So you'll see what I decided to put it with. It's kind of sitting in front and to the left of the of the Dragonite, but you'll see, you'll see. We're we're, get, we're gonna get there. Anywho, um, so here's the the position. It was like, okay, here's a little guy. Let's make a little tube again. This was I have to say I was fortunate about. You know, making the other tube was super super simple. I mean, it really was just. It is essentially a sphere for the head and then a tube for the body, and like that is the extent of what we have. But yeah, so. This is the project right now at its, you know, it, this is what this one I'm settled with, with the, um, with the positioning. It was like, we're gonna have a lot of swirling, kind of flowing energy action going on here. I think the Dratini's pose is all right. You know, considering that's a little guy. It's like, hey, look, you know, I'm here. I'm in the foreground, you know, do my thing. You know, I want to be part of the action too. That's the kind of energy that I wanted. So I just said a rock. And this is uh, one of the things that I wanted to have is i wanted to have here i'm going to pause this real quick so you're like yo where the hell did all this come from so i want the this part i didn't record because i was doing this so sporadically i took to explain what happened here i took a bunch of uh i used a triplanar so for those that don't know a triplanar is a cube that is masked in all dimensions so what happens is that the mask creates a three-dimensional image so let's say for example if you make a mask that's in the shape of a triangle a triangular like a, a 3d pyramid is going to be created so i used the triplanar to make cone shapes or excuse me uh conch shapes for all these energy swirls and this is the you know this is the this is more or less the finished product right here so i have the stone that's on the bottom being like broken by the immense energy that's coming up from behind you know Dragonair is riding that energy wave and Dratini's in the front kind of swooping in and Dragonite's now uh, his dragon claw looks uh, a lot more detailed so then I took that same kind of energy applied it to kind of flowing underneath that gigantic set of rock and now it's going to be time for painting so yeah anyway th so now it's a uh, <laughs> that was time for yeah I was like you're like whoa there's a huge change but yeah, it would, I recorded that stuff, or I sculpted that stuff um, outside of my house, so it was very touch and go, that's why I didn't record it, but it's alright, you, you guys get the idea, if you need some explanation, I'll be more than happy to show you. But here we have right base orange, a bit of a tan for the underbelly, very straightforward stuff, this is not rocket science when it comes to coloring Pokemon. Then we have this kind of turquoise for the wings, we have a... Uh, nice like a periwinkle that has like a slightly darker hue for the Dragonair. I'm masking off the underbelly right now, kind of smoothing it out and going to be painting that white. And then for the Dratini, I'm going to be doing the same thing, except that the hue of the periwinkle will be a bit, a little bit lighter, you know, slightly. Then uh, you'll see that I'm going to be adding a purple with some black for the eyes and at that point then we're just gonna go ham on the freaking um 
on the on the energy wave, you're gonna say, yeah, there we go. So it's a painted a metallic blue to start as a base. Used a beige color for the stones. Cause I was like, you know what? What color is stone? Let's go with that beige. I think it's gonna contrast well. Set a nice deep black for the uh, you know without a matte finish, kind of with a more reflective finish for the very uh, the very base of the base. And now I'm starting to add the high the highlights. So. I did, um, I used some silvers, um, some neon greens for the eyes. Here's that purple, there's the black. And I gotta say that little white highlights are really what, you know, sells the whole thing. So, you know, there's a the little purple, there's the white. Obviously, you know, there's a cutie pie, so that little white has to be bigger. Now, I did multiple layers for the eyes of Dragonite, and I think that it came out absolutely fantastic. It is super, super clean, and again, it comes to life once that little white dot is added. Look at that. Come on. Come on. Look at that. To give a little bit more contrast against the skin, I added very thin uh, brown lines to also give them a little bit more of a brow, and I think it kind of captures that cartoon, you know, slightly anime style a little bit more, and it just helps make the eye look a little more distinct. Now I'm adding uh, brown... Uh, highlights between I guess highlights brown shading between the scales underneath his body just to you know again aid in that contrast now obviously as you guys know you know I'm not a professional painter this stuff is just to uh, service as a demonstration uh, for what the finished model I hope to look like you know when it's painted IRL you're gonna add a little bit of shadow to the uh, between the limbs just to again aid in a little bit more contrast bring a little bit more to life I had a little bit of highlights as well um, all along the body, do the same thing with uh, Dragonair and Dratini. See, so, yeah, there we go. Look, look at that. Just adding a little bit of color really makes everything pop. And at this point, uh, it is just about time to show off the finished renders. So let me tell you, brace yourself because this is gonna be a doozy. I think this is uh, this guy came out really well. So here you go. Let me know what you think. And there you have it, ladies and gentlefish. There is Dragonite, Dragonair, and Dratini, all made into one model. So well, let me know what you guys think. Uh, feel free to give me a comment, a like, and a subscribe if you want to see more. And let me know what I should do next. I appreciate you guys sticking with me all the way to the end. And until next time, this is Glowing Gear Studios, signing out.